Good afternoon. Our conversation is going to get personal, so let me begin with a brief introduction of myself. My name is Morgan Eisenstadt. I'm a second year studio art and advertising double major from the northwest suburbs of Chicago. My favorite color is purple. I used to play soccer growing up, and I would, yes, consider myself a couch potato, especially once I turn Netflix on. Now, chances are when you leave here today, you're not going to remember any of that. In fact, some of you won't even remember my name, and that's okay, because you're probably going to remember what I say next. I'm an agnostic Jew. I identify as a non-conforming female. I fall somewhere on the asexual spectrum, am white, and am physically able-bodied. Now, the difference between what you won't remember and what you will comes down to a difference in identity. Now, identity is the foundations of us, the building blocks of who we are, the bricks at the bottom of the skyscraper. Identity is who we are in our innermost self. And the way in which we express that and make social connections is how we identify. Now, in social justice, there are widely believed to be two kinds of identity, personal identity and social identity. Personal identities are things that are flexible about us. These are things that we define our character with. Oftentimes, we call them our traits. These are things that they change over a progressive amount of time, so perhaps today I'm thoughtful and tomorrow I'm careless. Or I'm a pessimist now, but in 30 years' time, I have a whole new outlook on the world. Personal identities tend to be rooted in our interests and our beliefs at the time of which we identify. Social identities are very different. These are not changing, things that are not flexible. You are one. You are one race, one gender, one religion, etc., so on and so forth, from the time you're born until the time you die. These are widely considered to be static representations of ourselves, things that lie at our innermost core and that bind us. This is what is wrong with social justice. As an orientation advisor for the University of Texas for two years, a participant in the Multicultural Leadership Institute, and a leadership mentor here on campus, I've been through quite a few social justice workshops and diversity trainings at my time here. They always begin with the same activity. All of the participants are asked to fill out a worksheet that looks kind of like one of these. We're asked to write down and identify our social identities, asked to write down just one our absolute social identity, the thing that does not change, one of those static representations of ourselves. Our social identities should not be subject to this kind of finality in print, this kind of officiality of statement. Our social identities are just as flexible, just as changing and capable of evolution as our personal identities are. Now, I'm not here to present some kind of resolution to the problem of social justice or even to answer my own question. I'm here to present an argument, to lay a claim for you to take with you beyond our time together, for you to deliberate and to validate in your own life. To prove myself, I intend to discuss a few of my own social identities. At the beginning of this conversation, I identified myself as an agnostic Jew. Now, some people might say you cannot be possibly both a religion and a dismissal of religion. Of course, I disagree. It's how I identify. But it didn't always used to be that way. See, when I was in seventh grade, I was lucky enough to travel to Israel to be bat mitzvah on the top of Masada, becoming an adult in the eyes of the Jewish law. Had you asked me at that point in my life to fill out one of those worksheets, I would have absolutely said I was Jewish. I attended services, studied prayer. I even went to Hebrew school three times a week. You see, as I got older, though, I started to explore my relationship with God, spirituality, religion, and faith. And I realized that the identity, the innermost self, doesn't quite fully accomplish the ideals of Judaism. And so now I identify as an agnostic Jew. It's kind of like people who find faith and people who lose it in times of tragedy. People who convert and people who push against altogether. Religious affiliation can change. Mine certainly has. How can we possibly say that a social identity like religion is static if between two points of time in a person's life it's different? Another example, gender. In social justice, gender is widely believed to exist on a fluid physical spectrum. When I was younger, I had short hair, I wore baggy clothing, I played a lot of sports. Oftentimes, people thought I was a boy. In public and in restaurants, I got talked to with male pronouns. I got a lot of, hey, little buddy, little man, sir. I didn't really think much of it at the time. You see, I wasn't a boy, I was a girl, so I politely corrected them and moved on. As I got older through middle school and the first few years of high school, I started to think, 
that didn't quite fit either. You see, I started to transition into young adult womanhood, and I started to identify as such, wearing tighter clothing, more jewelry, styling my hair a little bit differently. I wanted to identify with the identity I believed I had as a young adult woman. That didn't quite stick. You see, at the end of high school and the early years of college, I began to feel like the associations with girl, woman, and even female didn't quite fit either. So now I identify as a non-conforming female. I use she, her pronouns, but if you're going to refer to me in the third person, I ask that you just use my name. You see, this identity comes down to language, breaks down to the ideas of words, and that words have different meanings. And as such, the identities with different words have different meanings. Now, it sounds a little technical, but it really isn't. It surmises into this idea, terminology. Terminology is the index of language, words, and phrases that we use in social justice. So terminology is based on the relevance of words. That's why social justice terminology is always growing, because we recognize that different words do in fact have different meanings. So when people say, oh, a change in social identity is just a change in words, they're not necessarily wrong, but they lack the fundamental understanding of what it is that they're saying. You see, if the meaning of a word differs to us and the identity meaning also does, then the identity differs in words. It sounds a little complicated, but it isn't. Being Jewish used to mean something to me before. It means something very different to me now. And because of progressive considerations in social justice and in ever-growing terminology, I have a new way to identify my religious affiliation. How can we possibly say that two words have the same meaning? If we are so keen on separating racism from racial prejudice, then the same consideration must be given to female and non-conforming female. We cannot put our social identities on a hierarchy, in which case some are accepted to change and others are not. And part of that is understanding that social identities exist with a social context and that associations with words amplifies their meaning. So to really drive this point home, let's take another identity, one that isn't a choice like religion or exists on a fluid physical spectrum like gender. Let's talk about race. Race is perhaps the most stagnant of the social identities. You are one race from the time you are born until the time that you die, right? Here's the thing. Social identities, as I said earlier, exist in a social context. It's kind of like a math equation. Social identity is not just the words, but also the internal meaning of the words and the identity to you. So I'm white. Being white doesn't really mean much to me. Were I to dig through my familial history and discover a cultural basis for that whiteness, perhaps that changes. But the word white might not. It's basic math when one side of the equation does too. So because of that internal meaning, because I've discovered a newfound cultural awareness of my whiteness, because I found that, that social identity changes. And while terminology and internal meaning are interrelated, they're not interdependent. One does not have to change for the other to change as well. Think about identifying as existing in a tunnel. You're on one end and on the other is a bright white light. And when you look at it, you call it a bright white light because that's what you see. As you move down the tunnel, as you progress through life, you start to learn a little bit more about what it means to be a bright white light and what it means to not. And you say, wait, I see grass. It must be a field. You move even further down the tunnel, and now you see swing sets and trees, and it's a park. You move even further down, and you see houses and children and families, and it's a neighborhood. You see, it's the same as identity. The scene of the neighborhood never changed. It was always a neighborhood from the time that you even thought it was a bright white light. The identity at your inner core doesn't change, but the way in which you identify it does, because you learn more, you understand more, you know more about social justice, the terminology that we use, the internal meaning to yourself. You see, social justice and its fundamentals is based that, on the idea that all people deserve equity and opportunity and in treatment. But lacking the ideas that we lie in the foundation of change as human beings is devaluing those beliefs. So I leave you today with my final argument, my final conclusion. What we for now believe to be stagnant identities are actually very fluid, very flexible, if you will. So yes, right now I'm a couch potato, but perhaps tomorrow I identify as a media consumer 
or a jogger. It's a development of myself. For now, I'm a non-conforming female, perhaps later agendered or strictly back to female. It's a development all the same. Social justice needs to refocus its lens onto the complexities of the relationships within it to really understand the structures of power, privilege, and oppression. This isn't just about dividing lines and saying, you go here and you go here. It's about understanding that these are just as fluid and we can move in and out of these systems. You see, I used to identify as Jewish. So hearing about Nazism and the Holocaust felt very personal. Whenever I heard about anti-Semitic remarks or acts, it felt like a personal attack on me. Regardless of my removal from the situation and the people involved, I felt like I was being attacked. As that social identity has changed, so has my relationship to that kind of oppression. I no longer feel like a personal victim. Instead, I feel ashamed of the fact that there are people that believe in the words that they're saying. So I have changed from being a victim to an advocate, and that is not to say that I have discounted being a victim. You see, I use my past experience as feeling like a personal victim to inform my current experience as an advocate of social justice. So let's begin with the fundamentals and let's get rid of those worksheets and activities that ask us to box and categorize ourselves, make lines in the sand and divide ourselves on these systems. Instead, let's start a conversation. Let's ask each other, who are you? Who have you been? How have you changed? What have you experienced? See, by ignoring the fact that our social identities change, we neglect our fluidity in social justice. And it is so vital that we understand it because those experiences, the past, the present, and possible future experiences that we all have in relationship to social identity, in relationship to power and privilege and oppression, is going to create a deeper understanding of social justice. If we really are striving for that balance and equity that we so badly want for all people, then we need to understand that we need a deeper understanding. It's as simple as that. The idea that we change and we grow and we develop as a society and as individuals should inform our social justice learning. Understanding that we change is so paramount to social justice, is so important. Because understanding that and teaching that and learning that creates an individual relatable level of social justice that allows us to connect to each other, to others and to ourselves. You see, we change from day to day. Who we are, what that means, and how we identify changes. And it's all because our social identities can change. Social justice does not take this into consideration right now. That's what's wrong. It asks us, who are you? That is who you are, that is who you've been, and that is who you will be. And that's where you fall in social justice. You're in a position of power, you'll always be in a position of power, oppression and privilege. So let's refocus the lens. Let's have conversations about change. We are human beings, we are beings of change. If we are beings of change, then so is what makes us. The foundations of who we are, the building blocks, the bricks at the bottom of the skyscraper are our identities. So if we change, they too must change. Social identities can change. And the reason is very simple, because all identity is flexible identity. Thank you.